seven yards. Whoa. Who is this kid? Lester. Welcome to the very, very, very first show of the Steve Weatherford Show, a podcast that I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time. And um, we've actually already recorded probably six episodes. Um, and I wanted to make the first one with a very, very special guest. Um, she is the love of my life. I've been with her since I was 19 years old. We met at 18 years old. We'll tell that story here in a little bit. Uh, but first, with a round of applause for everybody on YouTube and everybody out there listening in podcast land, welcome to the show, Laura Lee Weatherford. And the crowd goes wild. Ah. Babe, say hi. Hey. I'm really, really excited to to get into this podcast. And we were kind of like kicking around different ideas like... What is our first episode going to be? Who's the guest? What are we going to talk about? Um, and there's some some hurdles that I want to to clear in the very first episode for people that maybe don't know what this show is going to be about, doesn't know what type of people that this is going to benefit, doesn't know what types of guests that we're going to be on. Is this going to be a 10-minute show, 30-minute show? Is it going to be once a week? Is it going to be five times a week? So that's what I want to really accomplish in this first episode. And so I brought the person that has supported me the absolute most in my life, especially as an adult. Uh, and that's my wife. And so we're going to welcome her to the show. She's going to be essentially kind of interviewing me. Um, and I'm going to flip it on its head a little bit and ask her some questions so you can kind of have a little bit more background about me. Uh, my name is Steve Weatherford. I played in the, the NFL for 10 years. Um, I married my wife when I was 24 years old. We dated uh, essentially the entire time I was in college, sans probably one and a half semesters. Um, so it's been uh, it's been a long, fun, exciting road with her through um, the four, five different NFL teams that I played with, three years uh, for the New Orleans Saints, um, two games for the Jacksonville Jaguars, a no, year no, for... No, no, no. Jacksonville Jaguars was more than two games. Or, I'm sorry, Chiefs. two games with the Kansas City Chiefs, um, a season with the Jacksonville Jaguars, two seasons with the New York Jets, and then five with the New York Giants. Uh, since retiring, we moved out to sunny... Uh, San Diego. We've started two businesses. The businesses are crushing it. We're having a lot of fun. I'm learning so much more about myself through this entrepreneurial journey. And I, I wanted more than just Instagram and Snapchat and YouTube to be able to reach, teach, motivate, inspire, and really just kind of at the end of the day, share my journey. So babe, I know you prepared a couple questions um, that you wanted to really just kind of share the answers with. And I think you have a pretty good idea of the answers, but there's a lot of work that goes away that happens when you're not around, um, especially in the podcast um, arena. My wife essentially manages um, Weatherford Fit and Veritas Labs, which are our companies that we started together and uh, couldn't do it without her. But um, I think it would be really, really fun probably every three or four episodes, hopefully in the future, we'll see where this thing's thing goes, um, I'd love to be able to have like a weekly show with my wife where we talk about what's going on in our life and share more of our journey um, in addition to having some really, really epic guests on here. So babe, take it away. Okay. What inspired you to start this podcast? Um, really just kind of turning my, my career into what I feel like my calling is. You know, I did an episode yesterday with Joel Marion. Um, and uh, he's a guy, if, if people don't know who he is, he's made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but at the end of the day, like his true passion and his true calling in his life is what he's, he's getting into now. So he's actually at the same place I am. He's starting a podcast because he wants to be able to have um, a platform for longer form content, to be able to have either just conversations with the listeners or the viewers on YouTube or having different guests come on. And so for me, it's really about having longer form platform to be able to share my story, the successes, um, the failures, the ups, the downs, the life lessons. In addition to, I have a freaking ridiculous network of friends, babe. 
Like if you, if if we would have had this conversation when I was 18 years old, when we had just met and we were just starting to, you know, kind of fall in love and whatnot, if I would have told you, hey, when I'm 35 years old, you know, we're going to be multimillionaires, we're going to have five kids, we're going to live in this great big house and drive these cool cars, and then we're going to start a podcast and have these two businesses, like you probably would have told me like, you're crazy. For sure. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like we pretty much live like even better than what our dream life was when we were 18. Right. It's better than that. Better than that. In addition to, you know, back to my network of friends, think about this for a minute. I have hugged the last four presidents. Right. Bill Clinton's called my cell phone before. Right. And I'm not like saying this on the podcast to like impress anybody, but I'm just so freaking thankful that we've had the experiences that we've had. And the, the, the fun part about it is, is you remember me when I was 18 years old and I thought I was Eminem. All I wore, <laughs> all I wore, were like polo shirts and backwards MLB caps. And I listened baggy to Juve, pants. yeah, baggy pants. I listened to Juvenile, Belt. Master P, Dr. Dre. Um, hey, I still dude, like I, those. Though. I still, I, I freaking still love like them. Those. That will never change for got, me. I but I don't it. think I really like came to grips with the fact that I was like white. <laughs> until <laughs> That's I, true. Until hey, I was like twenty six. Hey, it was okay. 26. I went to high school with one person that wasn't white so i thought Babe, that was it's super my cool. podcast so you can say black on here and it's not racist right so so you went to school with what one black kid one black kid and i thought that like the way you were was super cool because it was i was unexposed <laughs> <laughs> mama 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 loved the hood in me yeah, um, i was unexposed but yeah man i mean i know we're getting off on tangents but that like that's why i love to be able to have a podcast because I hosted my ESPN radio show and I freaking hated when the producer would tell me I would have to talk about a topic like I didn't want to talk about. And honestly, like that's why we ended up making the decision to like quit working for ESPN after I retired, you know, and then we kind of explored hosting different TV shows. I hosted a TV show for Spike TV, which was a really rad show. Um, but it's still like, it wasn't what I didn't get to call the shots. And right. so we have become, you know, successful as a couple in building a business to where we can afford to fund our own show. Um, because I feel that confident in the people that support us, the people listening to this, that they're going to do for us and for this show the same thing that they've done for every other thing that we've ever rolled out. Because um, they know that that myself and you were always going to over deliver on what we promise to people. And, you know, this is just going to be another platform for me to be able to leverage the blessings and, and the relationships that I have in my life. You know, for example, like the freaking four presidents, there is a pretty good chance that at some point I'm going to have one of the presidents of the United States of America on my podcast. Like I, that's totally within the realm of happening. Um, in addition to all the crazy entrepreneurs, all the crazy pro athletes, um, and really just industry leaders, impactful, influential people that have a story to tell. So that's why we're doing a podcast. Awesome. How is this podcast going to be different from other people's podcasts? Let me flip it around on you. How do you think my show is going to be hey different now. than other podcasts? Because you're not really into the podcast. Game. I haven't really listened you to You love anybody. Joyce Meyer. I love Joyce I like Billy Allsbricks. Is that a podcast? I don't know if he does a podcast or not, but he's going to be on my show. I freaking love that guy. I, he's very motivating, but no, I don't listen to podcasts, so I couldn't really tell you. Well, how do you think, how do you think I'm going to do it differently than, than other people have done it, even if you don't know how other people have done it? Knowing me for almost 20 years. I think it's going to be different every week. So I don't, I think most people go into it very static of like, um, like I really only know one podcast, so like I don't really. But what podcast do you know? I know Lewis Howes. Right. Yeah. This is gonna be different than Lewis's. Right, show. because Lewis is very like, what makes you great, and it's all different types of people, but mm -hmm. like very centric as to what makes you great. I don't, I don't think you're gonna. I personally would be surprised if you did some one thing every week. Hey babe, you just gotta watch your chair when you're spinning around. Don't knock over my Super Bowl trophy. Sorry. For people that are listening to this and not watching on YouTube, I have my Lombardi trophy <laughs> as a prop in here. Because um, if you break it, you buy it. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your next question? That was it. All right. So How's I'll, it going to be different? I'll, 
I'll answer that now. Um, the way that our show is going to be different um, isn't the the X Factor is not going to be like the guests that we have on because I'm mm-hmm. sure a lot of the guests that we're going to have on our show have been on other podcasts before. But what's going to be different about ours is I want it to be like such a relaxed atmosphere that people don't feel like they're doing a podcast. People don't feel like they're doing a TV show or a radio show. I want the listeners and the viewers to feel like They are sitting on the couch next to us, Mm -hmm. listening to the conversation that you and I are having. Um, I want it to be intimate. I want it to be authentic. I want it to be real. Um, And I also want the guests that come on my show, I want them to benefit from it because I want to share the positivity and the encouragement and the energy that people that have supported me since joining social media Mm-hmm. have have given to me and I've been able to give that back to them. I want people to be able to experience that positivity. So when guests come on here, I want them to to read the comments and and look at the amount of shares and downloads that we get and I want them to feel loved and encouraged by the share by the share that they had on our show. I mm-hmm. want them that to motivate that motivate them to do it more. Awesome. So who is the podcast for? Uh you know, and that to me is anybody that wants to freaking be fulfilled because i i I'd like people that aren't goal oriented and people that aren't hungry to live a big life like just go ahead and and hit stop and move on to the next podcast because this podcast is for goal getters like this podcast is for people that want more out of life that want to become more than the limitations that other people and themselves put on them um, and so there's going to be a lot of actionable um, takeaways that people are going to get from this show. There's going to be a ton of motivation that people are going to get from these shows. They're going to get a ton of insight. And like for somebody like like a, a mother that, that had big dreams and big aspirations, but then she got married, uh, then she had kids, very similar to you. We got married, we got engaged when we were 23. Mm-hmm. We had married at 24, our first kid at 24, fast forward 11 years, we're 35 years old. We have five kids you didn't start your career really until about eight months ago. Right. Yeah. Eight months ago, my wife decided to, to discontinue like passively supporting my entrepreneurial experience. And she just jumped off of the 10 meter diving board and swan dove straight into my business. And since you've, you've gotten hyper involved in my business and now I can call it our business, we have probably almost 4x our business in four months like every single month that goes by there's like almost unquantifiable like you can't believe how much our business is growing and it's because you've brought into our business what you've brought into my marriage and that is like consistency um it's um the analytics of how you think you're very cautious and i'm like total gunslinger in life Um, but that's why you and I ended up attracting to each other because you were attracted to my confidence and and my bravado and my decisiveness, really kind of like all the character traits that you are starting to develop in yourself more and something that comes innate to me. And so like, I'm inspired by you because you're, you'll measure nine times and cut once Whereas I won't take time to measure at all. I'll be like, oh, that looks about right. Let's cut there. And then I end up every once in a while having to come back and cut it three or four more times. And so it's been fun as entrepreneurs for us to be able to kind of mesh that together and take your planning and take my decisiveness and my execution. And we're creating an empire together. So it's fun. And I'm hoping that this inspires, um, you know, fitness people, entrepreneurs, school teachers, police officers, military first responders, literally anybody that wants more out of life. I don't care if you want to be an entrepreneur or not. This is not for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs will benefit a boatload from this, but this is for athletes. This is for anybody that wants more out of life. Okay. So who are some of the guests that you have lined up? Um, or that you've already I will give you guys a little sneak peek into the first, um, first couple of people. Uh, my best friend, Lewis House is going to be one of our first guests, my best friend, Ash Gandahari. Um, You may have not heard that name before. um, You will. But you will, because he's going to be our first episode after this, a guy that has just had such a massive influence on my life. Um, Ed Milet, um, a guy that's probably in the the neighborhood of five or $600 million net worth, but that's really just kind of like the wow factor that 
that makes his name big, but really he's one of the most authentic, uh, most genuine dudes that I've met. And I've developed a really, really good relationship with him. And then he's, he's mentoring me. And then another guy we just did a podcast with, uh, two guys that we just did a podcast with yesterday were Bedros Koulian. Um, a guy in 2012 started a franchise called Fit Body Bootcamp, and in the last six years, now it has 700 locations. Um, and I love that guy to death. And uh, also did Joel Marion yesterday, a guy that, in my opinion, is probably the best marketer in the world. And um, sad to say he's a Philadelphia Eagle fan because he's from oh. South Jersey, so it hurt my heart to have him on my show, but he just has such a boatload of value <laughs> that I'm willing to overlook that. Um, and be a man of the people and bring that content to the people, regardless of the fact that, uh, you know, that his team after a hundred years of football finally has <laughs> one of these trophies. It wasn't a hundred. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, the Philly fans suck. Aww. Sorry guys. So I guess I, uh, have shrunk my, my crowd down from everybody in Philadelphia. Been, will never, never love this Philly. show. So nothing against, nothing against the city of Philadelphia, just the people inside of it. Hey. <laughs> No, no, no. That's, I'm just kidding. They gave that. me a really rough gonna, ride, though. They tell- poured a beer on my grandmother's head when we played there. My grandmother. That is sad. God rest her soul. Did, but, did that? That was. It did or did not happen? That happened, but. They poured a beer on my grandmother's yeah, head. Yeah, she's old. She's old and she's the sweetest person of all time. I don't, but you can't judge the whole city of Philadelphia. Okay, 90% something. of them. No. <laughs> Philadelphia has my favorite okay, coffee. Okay, anybody that was born and raised and still lives in Philadelphia? No. Don't listen. <laughs> no. Stop. I'm just kidding. If you're from Philly. I'm an equal opportunity lover. If you're, if you're from, from Philly, Philadelphia, I love Rival you too. Rival Brothers Coffee Company. That's where it's at. It is true. Shout out. That's not an ad. All right. It's not an ad. Next I question. just love it. <laughs> um, okay, so would you be willing to disclose anything that you're going to talk about with these folks on there? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to share every, <laughs> I'm sharing freaking everything. Uh, my wife actually, um, I don't want to say insisted, but discouraged me away from talking about uh, the addiction issues that I've had in my life. Um, but I'm resolute in, in talking about that and talking about my like personal, like deep, dark problems that I've had. I'm going to talk about the sexual abuse that I experienced as a kid. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, alcohol and drug abuse that uh, that I've had to overcome in my life. I'm going to talk about everything. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that people think that they know about me, but they really don't because they're just getting a snip, a snippet or a snapshot of my life. And I, I, I think I do a great job of keeping it 100 on on social media. I pretty much share everything, but I never felt like Instagram or Snapchat would give me the room to fully talk about like being sexually molested as a kid or um, getting addicted to to pain pills when I was in the National Football League. So I know those are like teasers that people are like, holy crap, but that's something that I want to dive like really, really deep in because I know there's a lot of people out there that went through sexual abuse right. as a kid or as an adult. There's a lot of people that are going to be listening to this right now that are addicted to pain pills or addicted to some type of recreational drug or, um, you know, just self self sabotaging techniques. Right. And, and I think it's going to be really, really powerful for, for you and for me and for the listeners and the friends of listeners when they share our show out with those people to understand that just because you encounter this in your life doesn't mean that you can't live a freaking massive life, like full of joy, right. full of excitement, full of fulfillment and full of uh, success and prosperity. Cause look at us sitting right now in our house. Like if I wanted to, I could be sitting in my freaking underwear right now doing a podcast right. and I'm not doing this to make money. Like we're not, I'm not planning and it, you know, it might end up happening after a year or two or three or five, or it might not end up happening at all, but I'm not planning it on, in any time in the near future of monetizing this podcast and having ads ran on this podcast, unless it's something that you and I built, you know, unless it's something with Weatherford Fit or or Veritas Labs, and and I'm not going to run an ad. I'm just going to tell people, you know, what we're working on, and right. if they're interested in involving themselves in um, supporting that, then great. But I'm not doing this podcast to make money because. At the end of the day, babe, think about like financially how blessed that we are. Mm-hmm. I want more. 
And, and I want people to realize that are listening or watching this podcast right now, that you're not wrong for wanting to live a freaking monster life and blessing everybody in their path. And honestly, like this podcast is a way for you and I to bless other people with our journey and with the different things and the different opportunities that have been opened up to us because we have lived, for lack of a better word, we've lived a rock star life and I'm 35 and I'm just getting started. Right. Next question, mama. Uh, you hit them. I hit all of them? You hit them. I freaking talk a lot. All right, babe. So then before before we kind of shift gears and talk about how excited we are for the other um, episodes that we have coming on, mm -hmm. what are you hoping that this podcast mm. does for other people? You're going to put me on the spot. I... Yeah, because I, I didn't... Just so everybody knows, if you can't tell, she didn't know that this question was coming because I if your answer, if your answer is not perfect, guess what? No one cares. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Right. And it's okay to share that um, with other people. I think just that, yes, one, you touched on it. Like living a life of abundance is something to be proud of. It's not something to, to dim. Like you don't have to dim your light and practice being rigorous and living in excellence. What does that mean to you? Like, what is, what is living with rigor and living in excellence mean to you? It means when I wake up at 6 a.m., I don't sit for two hours and get nothing done. Like, I got to wake up at 6 a.m. I got to wake up and hold my baby, and I get to wake up and call a lawyer, and I get to do all of this stuff. And at the end of the day, when I go to bed, I know I did it all, and I did it the way it was supposed to be done. I did it on time. I did it when I said I was going to, and I lived up to what I said I was going to do. So what I noticed when you were speaking right there was the language that you're using. And you weren't saying, I have to get up at 6 a.m. I have to do this. I have to have this phone call. I have to do that. You were saying, I get to. Explain right. to me why you're saying, I get to wake up at 6 a.m. I get to call my lawyer. Nobody wants to call their freaking lawyer. <laughs> so I actually like my it lawyer. It costs me money when you call our lawyer. <laughs> why like do him. you get to do that? Um... I get to do it because there's a lot of people in this world that don't have those opportunities. Everybody has the opportunity to no. get up at 6 a.m. Well, everyone has the opportunity to get up so at 6 a.m. So explain to me what you mean when you say I get to get up at 6 a.m. Because nobody wants to get up at 6 a.m. I know I don't. Okay. Because there's two ways you can look at life. It's a have to or a get to. If I have to do something, you go into it like, ugh, I have to do this. But if you look at it as like, I get to, like I get to get up. Mm-hmm. I get to, I'm alive. I how get to do, get like up. How, well, okay. Well then let's, before we end the show, let's give a little life lesson uh -huh. to the people that are listening to this and let's make this, let's, this takeaway from this show obviously is what we're going to do and what people are going to receive and what people can expect and the mm -hmm. guests that we're going to have on and, and kind of like the heart that we are going to, to put into this show. Let's give them a tangible takeaway Living in the have to or living in the get to, what does that mean to you and what does that mean to people listening to this? If you live in the get to, you're going to be joyful. You're going to feel free. You're going to feel like everything that you do in life is your choice. Mm -hmm. It gives you a completely different perspective. Pers That's the word I was fishing for, mama, was perspective. So how can somebody have that paradigm shift and, and manipulate their perspective to live in the get to instead of the have to. There's not one. Can I help you here? Yeah. Help me. Cause I, I mean, whenever you have to decide that, because that's one thing it. that my wife and I um, really do for each other and we're getting really, really good at it is we coach each other, you know? And that's one thing that was like, I'm so freaking blessed in my life and I know I keep saying that, but I really do feel like it. Like, I mean, look at the, the, the men and the women that I've had in my life that mm -hmm. have shaped and molded me to be the man that you're married to today. Right. I uh, like, I am so far beyond like perfect. Right. Um, I probably actually probably have more character flaws and issues than most people that I know, but I also have more strengths and more abilities as well. Um, because I triple down and quadruple down on my strengths, especially mm -hmm. during my NFL career. 
and that it enabled me to become the best in the world at what I did, but it also stopped me from making growth in certain areas of my life. And so to, to tie it all back and close the loop of, of having a coach is my wife and I will coach each other. And, and every time I catch her language, every time I catch my wife using average language, average language would be like, I want this, or I hope I, this happens, or I wish that this would happen. Or when I hear her say, I have to, like that is average language. What you, what you speak, you, you speak it into existence. Right. Yeah. So let's tie that all back into have to and get to and, and shifting your mindset. Can I, can I tell you for me personally, the coaching that I give you that, that gets you right back into that championship language? Yep. Gratitude. You know, because you're like, man, I, I have to call the lawyer and then I have to go see our CPA because we have to get our taxes done or I have to go to ACES soccer practice. Like you got five kids. There's a lot of things you have to do. <laughs> there really are. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you think about it that way, you're like, man, I don't ever have time for myself. Right. But if you, ah, if but you, you approach it that. from gratitude, mm -hmm. then it's like you don't have to do anything for five kids right. like you get to right. our kids are freaking righteous right you know we, we have five kids and have four daughters mm -hmm. which i know you love our daughters and then like let's say like our our daughters had no character or personality and they were just girls right <laughs> you would wish they were boys be real with yourself sure. and be real with the listeners. I for you sure You wish would. our four daughters were boys. Sans their personality I, and their character. I would want You to. would rather have five. You would rather have four girls and or four boys and one girl. Oh, for sure. Like not a chance right. in hell would I would like want for that. When I was a kid, when I was like yeah. 18, 19, 23, 24, I wanted like four boys and a girl. You know, like we always talked about that, like yeah. having a whole bunch of boys. boys. And I think we did. The reason we did that is... Like sports and and athletics and and that was our life. That was our livelihood. It was. It was all that you and I knew. Because when you met me, I was a college football player. Right. It's all we um, knew. And I was aspiring to be a pro. And you knew that from the day that I met you. Like you knew that I wanted to be. Right. I wanted to live a massive life. You knew that I wanted to live in a massive home. And you knew that I wanted to buy my mom her dream car. You knew that you know I wanted to do all these different things. And I wanted to be a pro. And like you totally bought into it. Like you, you could not have supported me more during college or more during my NFL career. I think you were probably the most supportive NFL wife that I've ever met. Mm. And I always took that for granted. You know, I always took that for granted because you had always been that for me. And so like, how dare I ever say like, I have to do something for you. Like I get to do something for you. And it's not <laughs> like I'm like paying you back. It's just like, oh boy, you did so much for me. In addition to, you know, you're helping us parent five kids and now you get to join our business and, yeah. and help us take it from being a, you know, a seven figure business, which is what it is right now into an eight figure business. Like how cool is it going to be? Cause it will happen. I'll say it on the first podcast. Like our businesses will be eight figure businesses probably before 2019. You know, like that's exciting for me to say, and it's exciting for me to have so much confidence saying this on the first episode of my podcast. And the only reason I can say that is because of the fact that I know I have somebody that, that supports me the way that you do and not just in business and not just in, you know, my, my football career or my, my personal life. Like you coach me to be a better person every day and I get to be married to you. I get to wake up with you in the morning. I get to help you raise our five kids and it's just a paradigm shift it's perspective so we're going to tighten this show up we're we are really really excited um to be able to share our lives with you to be able to share the lives of the guests that we have on um to let you guys see a whole different side of my life that nobody has ever seen and honestly i'm sure there's some stuff that i'm going to share on this show that like you you might not know about me like you might have I might have referenced it before, but when I go right. and I tell the, the really granular, nitty gritty details of like what I did as a kid or what I experienced as a kid. I don't know the stories of you as a it's kid. It's going to be pretty gnarly, but I think it's yes. honestly, it's going to be therapeutic for me too, because right. I'm going to be able to talk about stuff that I'm not proud of, 
but I'm hoping that it will be able to resonate with, with one, two, 10, 100, 1,000, a million people out there because I know there's so many people that have struggled with the things that we've struggled with in our marriage, the things mm-hmm. that I've struggled with personally in my life and the, and the different stories from the guests that we're gonna have. So, man, I can't be um, more thankful um, to be able to start this podcast with you sitting by my side, to be able to start this podcast with the people that are listening right now. And um, just very, very excited, man. So if you guys want more of what we have, click the subscribe button and um, and leave us a review because the more engagement and interaction and, and sharing that we can have on this show, the greater that the the platform is going to become and the, the, the better guests that we're going to have on here. And to be honest with you, like, I don't think our first five, six, seven shows, I don't think we could get better people than what we have yeah, no, they're because good. they're all like my most dear friends, but they're all like world influencers, not like industry influencers. Like these right. are people that have influenced either global economy, global opinion, um, and they just change lives. Um, and it's really, really exciting for me. So, man, I love you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. Babe, I want to acknowledge you before we get out of here for being the most powerful, strongest, most selfless person that I have ever met in my entire life. And wow. I love you and I'm thankful for you. And as soon as we get done with this podcast, I'm going to take you upstairs. <laughs> All right, the podcast's over. Love you guys. Talk soon. Time to